Understanding the inner workings of our own planet is a challenge in itself, making it even more daunting to decipher the secrets concealed within other celestial bodies. To tackle this, scientists employ indirect methods like chemical traces and remote geophysical data. Among these celestial mysteries, the Moon, Earth's closest neighbour in the solar system, stands out. It's an object we can easily spot in the night sky, yet its composition has perplexed us for generations. The lunar surface bears visible scars, some discernible to the naked eye. Early scientists, intrigued by the Moon's dark areas, initially likened them to oceans, hence the name Mare, which is Latin for seas. Subsequent observations, however, revealed a starkly different reality. These seas were actually solidified lava fields. On Earth, seismic data plays a pivotal role in unravelling our planet's interior. When the Apollo mission set foot on the Moon, scientists saw a unique chance to gather lunar seismic data. Astronauts installed instruments capable of capturing natural shock waves. Yet, the lunar seismic waves defied expectations. Over time, as seismic data and corroborating evidence accumulated, a hazy picture of the Moon's interior began to emerge. Nevertheless, interpreting this data has given rise to conflicting viewpoints and lingering mysteries. Let's dive in and find out more. During the Apollo missions conducted between 1969 and 1972, astronauts embarked on a remarkable scientific endeavour by deploying seismic experiments on the near side of the Moon. Five strategically positioned stations were established to capture passive seismic data. Apollo 11's missions spanned approximately 20 days, while stations 12, 14, 15 and 16 operated almost continuously from their installation until 1977. These seismic experiments on the Moon were groundbreaking. They involved collecting and digitising seismic data right on the lunar surface, which was then transmitted back to Earth. The data was stored on magnetic reel-to-reel -reel tapes, complete with timestamps denoting the moments when the signals reached Earth. However, the data's sampling rates displayed slight variations due to the unpredictable fluctuations in the data sampler and its sensitivity to the Moon's substantial temperature shifts. Furthermore, there were timing discrepancies within the data. Recent efforts have been made to rectify these issues and refine the lunar seismic dataset. One remarkable lunar event took place during the Apollo 12 mission where astronauts intentionally crashed the lunar module into the Moon's surface after their return to the command module. This impactful manoeuvre triggered the first human-made moonquake. The resulting vibrations registered on the lunar seismic sensors, but they exceeded expectations in terms of magnitude and duration. They displayed characteristics distinct from the earthquake vibrations typically observed on Earth. NASA continued these seismic experiments during subsequent Apollo missions, including Apollo 12, 14, 15 and 16, yielding similar results. At the time, these findings were profoundly surprising as they suggested that the Moon had a lower density compared to the Earth. The data hinted at the existence of four distinct types of moonquakes. Deep moonquakes occurring approximately 700 kilometres below the lunar surface, possibly influenced by tidal forces. Impact-induced vibrations triggered by meteoroid impacts. Thermal quakes believed to result from the expansion of the frigid lunar crust when it was exposed to the morning sun after enduring two weeks of the Moon's freezing lunar night. And shallow moonquakes occurring at a depth of 20 to 30 kilometres beneath the lunar surface. It is this last category where the Moon seemed to be behaving differently. Between 1972 and 1977, the Apollo Seismic Network identified 20 quakes a few of which registered a formidable 5.5 on the Richter scale. However, what truly sets these shallow moonquakes apart was the prolonged duration. Once initiated, they persisted for tens of minutes, sometimes hours, a stark contrast to their terrestrial counterparts, which typically endure for less than two minutes. This extended lunar resonance led to the comparison describing the moon as ringing like a bell. Some even ventured to speculate that the Moon might be hollow. However, it is essential to clarify that these seismic waves were confined to the lunar surface. 
On Earth, the presence of water can weaken the stone structure, causing expansion of various minerals. When energy travels through these compressible formations, it acts as a damping mechanism, much like a foam sponge that diminishes vibrations. In contrast, the Moon is believed to be arid, cool and predominantly rigid. Consequently, moonquakes set it into motion, akin to striking a tuning fork, generating vibrations throughout its relatively unyielding interior. The seismic data further unveiled that the deepest regions accessible through travel time data, as inferred from the Apollo 11 seismic missions, extended to approximately 1300 kilometers in depth for P waves and 1100 kilometers for S waves. This information leaves a considerable degree of uncertainty regarding the structural composition near the Moon's core. In an endeavour to surmount this challenge, scientists embarked on a quest to identify seismic waves that ricocheted at the interface between fluid and solid layers. They achieved this by meticulously stacking waveforms. However, the outcomes of these efforts appeared to diverge, depending on the researchers involved. Some results leaned towards the existence of a fluid outer core enveloping a solid inner core, with a low velocity zone situated above the core mantle boundary. Conversely, other interpretations suggest a more substantial fluid core devoid of any solid component and lacking a low velocity zone. These stark disparities underscore the notable uncertainty inherent in the seismic data. Adding to the complexity, S waves originating from the lunar far side failed to register on certain near side seismometers. Moreover, instances of deep mooncakes were conspicuously scarce on the far side. This phenomena led to an interpretation that posited the existence of a shear wave shadow zone arising from highly attenuating regions surrounding the Moon's core. However, the wealth of data at our disposal extends beyond seismology. Satellite based gravimetry and altimetry offers insights into various aspects of the Moon, including its mass, mean radius, moments of inertia, and tidal love numbers. These love numbers, which elucidate a planet's body's response to tidal forces, are intricately linked to its internal characteristics, encompassing density, shear modulus, bulk modulus, and viscosity profiles. In broad terms, a celestial body featuring a liquid or partially molten layers tends to exhibit greater deformation and consequently higher love numbers compared to a solid rocky body. Notably, the data gleaned from the measurements appear to indicate the presence of a fluid core and an extraordinarily low viscosity layer near the core mantle boundary. Among the enigmatic regions within the Moon's interior, the lowermost mantle holds particular intrigue. Seismic data has unveiled a perplexing feature. The lowermost 150 kilometers of the mantle appears notably weak. Early investigations have posited that this feeble layer might harbor molten material. However, explaining how the mantle reaches temperatures high enough for melting remains a formidable challenge, unless it contains substantial quantities of water. Further examination of the seismic data reveals further mysteries. When scrutinizing the phenomena of deep moonquakes, a remarkable pattern emerges. The majority of the quakes appear to be concentrated on the near side of the moon, with only a scant few venturing into the far side. Even more perplexing is the existence of a peculiar zone where no deep moonquakes have ever been detected. The mere presence of deep moonquakes is inherently strange. Deep within the moon's core, the elevated pressures and temperatures should theoretically inhibit brittle failure or frictional sliding. Nevertheless, they are detected, and what's even more baffling is their apparent clustering. It's plausible that the far side of the Moon simply lacks the requisite conditions to generate these quakes, possibly owing to its starkly different geological features. An alternative hypothesis suggests the presence of an internal structure deep within the Moon's interior that obstructs the seismic waves generated by far side moonquakes from reaching the seismometers on the near side. One plausible explanation posits the existence of a layer of partially molten material positioned just above the lunar core, acting as a seismic wave barrier. One crucial aspect of unravelling the Moon's enigmatic interior lies in the precise measurements of its shape. Astonishingly, the lunar interior exhibits a more efficient dissipation of tidal energy during monthly periods as opposed to annual ones. 
In our current understanding, this phenomena is only accounted for if there exists a distinct layer at the lower reaches of the lunar mantle. However, it's worth acknowledging that these models may not offer the most accurate depiction of the intricate behaviours exhibited by actual lunar rocks. A recent study has shed new light on this matter, showcasing that an existing dissipation model known as the Sundberg-Cooper model could elucidate the heightened dissipation occurring at one-month intervals without necessitating the existence of a separate deep mantle molten layer. Rather, their findings propose that the Moon's mantle remains in a solid state. It is essential to keep in mind the constraints imposed by the scarcity of the available data and the limited coverage of listening stations. Thus far, the dataset encompasses roughly 12,000 recorded events on the Moon. This dataset can further be categorised into 1,800 impact events, 28 instances of energetic shallow moonquakes, and 7,000 occurrences of exceedingly faint deep moonquakes. When scrutinising the geological distribution of these events, a striking pattern emerges. Both shallow and deep moonquakes exhibit a pronounced clustering tendency, a stark contrast to the more dispersed nature of the impact events. The analogy between our understanding of the Moon's interior and our knowledge of the Earth's subsurface is evident. While we possess only a fraction of the information needed to comprehend the depths beneath our own planet's surface, the Moon's mysteries appear even more elusive by comparison. As always, be brave, be curious, the truth is waiting for us. Until next time.